I'm going to start with this little triangle here, okay, because we can find x by using 6 and 4. x squared plus 4 squared is 6 squared. Move your 4 squared over, square root it, and you should get something like this. And to three decimal places, that's your answer. Easy? Now we've got x, so this time let's use this triangle. Okay, so I'm going to try to make a bigger right angle triangle, yeah? So this time the hypotenuse is 8. The adjacent sides are x. This side here is y plus 4, isn't it? This side is y plus 4 because it's adding those two sides together. I'm going to do the same thing. x is this. We found that, didn't we? So if I apply for this big, the bigger triangle here that I circle or outlined, uh, it's going to be y plus 4 squared because not just y squared it's the whole thing squared isn't it so the whole side is y plus 4 so y plus 4 squared plus the other side x squared equals 2 hypotenuse squared so 8 squared now we found x x is 4.472 so substitute that in move it to the other side so I have this by itself because we don't want y plus 4 squared let's get rid of the square square root it so I can get rid of that square. Move the 4 over to the other side because I just want y, I don't want y plus 4. So move the 4 over like that by subtracting. Plug that into your calculator very carefully. That's what you should have. So just three decimal places, that's your answer. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So guys, the only little different thing here, the only thing that might have confused you a little bit was where it was y plus 4, the whole thing squared. So usually we only did the y squared or the x squared, one pronumeral squared. But this time it's just a little bit more bigger. But as I said guys, apply the same method. You just need to add a little bit of extra steps. Okay? So that was y. I'm going to put y over there. Now let's find z is, if you can see, it's part of this big right angle triangle. Yeah? The hypotenuse is 10. This side, this side is x as usual, but this side is z plus y plus 4. Now it's a little bit more bigger, but don't panic, just apply the same method, okay? So, z plus y plus 4 squared, so that whole side squared, plus this side squared, which is x squared, is hypotenuse squared, so 10 squared. We know y and we know z. Substitute y, see how y is 2.6, put that in x is 4.4, .4, put that in. Okay, so getting less pronumerals is always good. So, get sub in those values, move this over to the other side, and I don't want squared, so that square root both sides, so I can get rid of that square. And I, don't, I just want z, I don't want z plus something. So move this over to the other side by subtracting. And again guys, be very careful, put that into your calculator and check your answer. It should be something like this. So to three decimal places, it's 2.311. And that's the answer. So Z is 2.311. We've got X and we've also got Y. Step by step. 13. Okay, we're getting a lot more complex. This time it's a three-dimensional shape. So like a box, a rectangular pris um, prism. What I'm going to do is to find X and Y. Have a look. Make sure you can identify this three-dimensional three shape. It's a 3D shape, and you can see that X is the diagonal of the bottom rectangle. And you can see this is from one corner to the other corner, that's Y. And guys, if you see this, I'll draw it up here. That is a Although it doesn't look like it, if you, if you look at it in a two-dimensional way, if you can see it in a three-dimensional way, this shape is a right-angle triangle. Okay, that is a right-angle triangle, isn't it? So we've got one right-angle triangle there, which we can find one of the pronumerals, hopefully. But in this right-angle triangle, well, first of all, can you tell me what that length is going to be? That length must be equal to this length, which is 9. So that one is 9. But again, we still have two different pronumerals in one right angle triangle. I can't find any of those yet because I have two pronumerals. So what I'm going to do is try to find some other right angle triangle that I can start off with.
What I'm going to use is probably, I'll use a different colour so you don't get confused. Have a look. I'm going to use this, oh, so crooked, that right angle. Can you see it? The right angle on the base of the rectangle. So you can see that that is a right angle triangle. And the hypotenuse is x, this side is 10, and you can see this is 4, so this must also be 4. So let's, how about we start off with that? Yeah, so this base triangle. So I'm going to say that x squared equals to 4 squared plus 10 squared. Yeah, just applying the Pythagoras theorem. X square root, calculate, to two decimal places it's 10.77. So I've got x very quickly. And now, as I said, let's use this other right angle triangle. Okay, the three dimensional one. So this time we know that y squared, that's the hypotenuse in this triangle, y squared is 9 squared plus x squared, isn't it? Now we've found x. x is 10.77. Substitute that into there, just like that. And then square root it to get just y. Put that into your calculator. That's what you should have, what should appear. And to two decimal places, that's your answer. So that's y, that's x. Very, very simple. Okay, but make sure guys, be careful when you get three-dimensional shapes. Some people find it difficult to look at shapes in a three-dimensional way, so make sure you can observe the figure first very closely. Okay, so that's 13.